you know, to modern day men, you know, the, uh, to, to modern society, which has essentially lost its soul, um, the new age has an appeal because it restores some sense of mystery. Um, it, it imitates the, the syncretism, therefore, of the Gnostics, uh, blending together esoteric ideas from the Far East, you know, Buddhism and stuff like that, with maybe some homegrown Western traditions to produce this hodgepodge uh, that may be incoherent, but nevertheless intriguing. Um, and we're finishing this the story new age kind of moment. Uh, if you can finish the story, we started with uh, with this lady uh, at the airport in Rome. Oh, right. Yeah. Yes. Well, unfortunately, I didn't. Uh, you know, th there wasn't really too much uh, beyond that. I mean, we we said goodbye to each other, and I wish her well. But uh, you know, my only point about that was that even a person who's obviously you know devout in in you know in Roman Catholicism, nevertheless, was still taken in by all of this nonsense. You know, yeah. and and many. I don't know if you heard what I said about that. Also, with uh, at the same time, a priest friend of mine back in the mid two thousands when the Da Vinci Code was like really popular. He told me that many Orthodox people came to him in confession, asking, oh, is it true that Christ was married? And, you know, all, all sorts of like, you know, stupid ideas that that those books were promoting. And, and you know, because, you know, a lot of people are, are not, they don't really know their faith that well. And, you know, they're, they're susceptible to these ideas, you know. And so it's it's kind of, in some ways, St. Irenaeus has, it's, it's a wonderful uh, call for all of us. At, you know, whatever position we're in in the church, either clergy or laity or, or young or old, to know our faith better and to be on guard, you know, and, uh, you know, um, you know, there's a lot more that one can say, even if we want to, we, we began talking about the transgender movement, too. In some ways, Gnosticism uh, has certain similarities to uh, the modern day transgender ideology, because uh, it's the idea, basically, that your mind is its own place that it has no connection to the body at all, that the body is kind of this total afterthought, that it has no metaphysical or ontological connection to your soul. You know, you could be the mind of a female and have a male body, that those two entities are not somehow organically united, um, which of course is what Christianity and just common sense teach. Um, you know, so in some ways, as I said, these ancient heresies, they come out in, but with new variations as to, uh, over time. And, uh, and the, the weaponry of St. Irenaeus and the other church fathers is, uh, this, this is our great arsenal against these things. And, uh, you know, I, I think I'll, I'll leave it at that. If, if anyone, please, of course, has any questions, uh, I would love to be able to discuss that more with you. Thank you. Thank you, Father Matthew. Please, as I said, if anyone has a question, just raise your hand and, or just uh, put it in the chat. I'll check the, the chat. I see... George says, been rubbing elbows with Protestants, evangelical. Church. Yes, what did he mean by that? I saw I that. Don't know. He, he, he had to go, so <laughs> okay. it, will, it shall remain a mystery. I don't know, I guess. I, I mean, I think I, maybe it was because I, I, I mentioned something about that our worship is not just sitting in the pews, kind of mentally abstracting things. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe yeah, that's yeah, what he was uh, referring to. Yeah, he, he, he left, I guess he had to go. But, uh, well, Father... That, that's very important, everything you shared. I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. I think my it's pleasure. very important because every time when we come back to the fathers, uh, especially for those one who, who had to uh, uh, fight the, 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 let's say, those heresies or Gnosticism spreading around in Asia Minor and then, of course, in Greece and Rome and everywhere, it was important to understand that many of those heresies, that they are just uh, metamorphosized today in a different uh, variations, different cults, different, uh, sometimes, unfortunately, even Christian denominations who have accepted that they just don't call them like that, but uh, they right. use yes. names yeah. as their opinions. I would just add, uh, and I will agree with you one thing you mentioned, yeah. that uh, most of the, the, the theology that we have here from the fathers today is basically uh, is produced as a as an ap apologetics from the fathers. So were, the church was never had an intention to kind of uh, create a dogmatics, create a theology, create a doctrine. It was only an organic fate. But when the heresies came up, came forward, yeah. then most of the fathers they had to be in defense of the truth to come out with the terms like we have the third of course. There was wasn't there a, uh, also a teaching? Uh, I heard one tradition says that actually it was origin 
who came up with the word Theotokos. Not that it was his word, but that, that uh, he was the first church father who started uh, uh, promoting the word and, and became like it, it, he came with the word. But I, that, I that's think certainly that, possible. The, the dates would fit with that. That papyrus is from Egypt and it's around 250. So that would totally match with his dates. So um, yes. that is that is possible. Yeah. Yes. So it, it makes a lot of sense. But uh, the, the way how, how everything is produced, when you mentioned at the end about the, the you know, that sometimes even traditional Catholics and unfortunately, sometimes even Orthodox, they, they get confused about Christ was married, he had wife, he did this, he died and so forth. I remember uh, CNN and National Geographic and many other uh, shows, the History Channel, they sometimes produce this uh, sensational uh, oh. documentaries about, about all of that. I know, I, I, I'm so like, it just, it just I hate it. It, it makes yeah. my skin crawl. Well, Scott Kendall has a comment. He says, Luther seems to be, uh, to have been agnostic at his core, but ends up the entire Reformation soundly, thank God for St. Irineos. Um, yeah, I don't know if you want to comment on that, Father. Yes, uh, well, and that's the thing. There is, there is a kind of Gnostic quality to Protestantism in the sense of its non-physicality, in the sense that it all, only requires a mental um, kind of acceptance of certain truths, and then your salvation has been granted. You know, um, that idea is very Gnostic. You know, um, the idea, I mean, they, they would say that that's, you know, repentance you know this kind of prayer the sinner's prayer you know that but but really what it, it amounts to is a kind of mental acceptance of certain doctrines and then your your salvation has been complete and, and it cannot be erased you know which is which is totally not the, the the traditional orthodox understanding of salvation as a lifelong process of being reborn and regenerated by the grace of the Holy Spirit, uh, that we are a work in progress, even up, even after death, uh, you know, even even up until the moment really of the last judgment, we're a work in progress, when the prayers of the faithful can help out our, our the, you know, the condition of our soul and um, and bring us into a greater degree of ability to accept God's grace. You know, that's you know the, the very word salvation in latin salvus means health and uh, and that's really the, the the kind of it's uh, because of this sort of very legalistic way of looking at salvation that kind of came through saint augustine and then on into the west you know um especially it kind of reaches its its total reduction to the absurd in calvin um you know that that everything basically is just a kind of matter of getting your debts cleared in an imaginary bank account um you know, uh, that, that sort of idea of salvation is very much adverse to the authentic Christian message of becoming more helpful, health, healthy, rather, and becoming more, you know, to, in a position that you can accept God's love and God's grace and be able to be in the presence of God, um, you know, by being reborn in the church through the grace of the sacraments. Yeah, Nicholas uh, mentions, he says, I think that uh, Dan Brown's book, uh, let me just open the, the whole section here. It's uh, this. Okay. Uh, I think uh, Dan Brown's book became famous because of the mystery behind each book. I also think that Dan Brown had formal knowledge uh, to write each book like he was part of a secret society. Probably. I mean, the world, the world loves its own. Uh, so, I mean, he in a day and age, when people generally don't read very much, you know, uh, what are the books that are the most like like viral books? You know, like Da Vinci Code, uh, Harry Potter. You know, I mean, like it's it's always bad stuff like that. You know, um, you know, I don't want to be too black pilled about the whole thing, but like you know, that's yeah. it. Definitely does it, it. It it looks very much Nicholas uh, like what you're saying. A lot of the a lot of the occult as well over there you can find. Oh but, yeah. Uh, uh, Mark says, uh, greatly appreciate the synergism of early tradition coupled with the scriptures, hand in hand. Uh, this will never fail to guide us, slipping further and further away from my once unshakable standing on the teachings of the Reformation. Uh, yes, Mark, uh, I will just add that, uh, yeah, glory to God. That's why this uh, kind of reminiscence or coming back to the fathers, to the, uh, studying the fathers, not just from, let's say, the past few centuries, uh, but rather the ones that live right at the time of the apostles and even uh, after the apostles is very essential because we we want to preserve and keep the faith as it was uh, given to us by the apostles, of course, from Christ, uh, 
on the day of the Pentecost uh, to, from the apostles to the first generation of the bishops to this day. Uh, I, I think, Father, I just want, I have a question as well. I just wanted to check with you, but I, I, uh, somewhere I read that the, even the Gospel of St. John, uh, because it was written at the latest uh, compared to the relative to the other Gospels, was actually written as a, uh, as a request by the local bishops of Asia Minor, who had a lot of issues with the Gnostics at the time. Mm. So he was the last living apostle. All of them were uh, spread out throughout the empire. Many of them were killed. Uh, St. Peter, St. Paul, they died in Rome and many others. So basically when he was writing this gospel, it was more like a, uh, that's why it's a little bit different than the synoptical gospels. Yes. It has a lot of uh, a rich, deep uh, theological uh, language that uh, you can see that he starts with the with a bombshell at the beginning. Mm -hmm. the, the God became word, he, and, and then he continues that he, he's flesh, something that as him being a Jew, to say something like that, it's already blasphemous. It's already heretical. But mm -hmm. again, his gospel is probably one of the most beautifully written, uh, filled with, 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 uh, with, with the deep knowledge about everything. That yes. was written, I don't know if you know this, but more as a reaction to the local bishop who asked him to write his gospel to precisely using his authority as apostle, as the beloved uh, disciple of Christ, to write down exactly what happened, who was Christ. And then he mm. reveals basically like none of other that Christ is the son of God. He is the Lord. You, that's, you know, that's very interesting. I never heard that he was, it was done at the request of the local bishop, but I do know, and this is very, this is totally accepted even by mainstream New Testament scholars, non-Orthodox people also, that um, it was definitely, St. John's gospel was definitely written in response to a lot of local heresies. Um, one of the big ones, of course, were these early Gnostics, but they, 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 you wouldn't use the word Gnostic at the time, they would be called the Docetists, so which, which is almost like the Gnostics, really. The, the Docetists were the people who thought that Christ simply appeared in the flesh, and that he wasn't actually incarnate, you know, and so that's why there's such an emphasis on the passage that we just read this past Sunday from Doubting Thomas, you know, that he actually touches, the, the, you know, the wounds of the Lord. And there's other parts too, where the, you know, that, that draw upon, draw great attention to the physicality of Christ. Um, and uh, and also another group too. I could put it in the chat. A group of heretics that actually still exist, believe it or not. They're called the Mandaeans. Um, they were a group of people that uh, there's even a I don't know if you can use it the word church, but there, there's a some kind of synagogue of the Mandaeans here in New York City. In fact, they're a group of people that uh, have existed historically in Iraq. And in Jordan and around there, they were they're the descendants of the disciples of John the Baptist, and they believe that he was actually the Messiah. Um, and so that that is the reason why Saint John, in the beginning of many uh, uh, in, in the um, uh, in, in the um, in several places in the beginning of, of his gospel, he says there was one who was sent to bear witness of the light, but he was not that light. Okay, that's why St. John puts in that language very specifically. He was there to bear witness to the light. And it was, that is always universally acknowledged to be a kind of anti mandaean sort of, you know, tag there. Yeah, um, St. John also is, I think, whether it was him or St. Paul who says that basically anyone, uh, the, the, the way we will recognize the antichrists in the future and in his time, in the time of the apostles, even was, Every time when someone teaches you that Christ did not um, incarnate in the flesh, he did not right. became a human, it is a uh, her heresy. It is right. a, is a false that, teaching. That's a perfect example. So that that's an anti-docetic. You know that, yes. that you know these docetists were like, you know they were you know there were there was two kind of like groups of of heretics basically that in the late first century. Then there were these. Uh, Ebionites, who were Jews, who believed that Christ was the Messiah, but not really God, yeah. and that he was, you know, kind of, uh, you know, th that phrase son of God also has analogs in the Old Testament, and so they kind of believed him to be like a prophet, Messiah kind of figure, but not God incarnate, and then there were these Ebionites who were Greek origin, who, you know, they couldn't imagine God becoming flesh, and so th these were the kind of two extremes. As I said before, that's generally those early heresies fall into those two camps you know one of those two camps yes yes okay uh okay scott says uh, more people with too much time on their hands and not enough work as well as the devil <laughs> could be wrong though yes uh 
Yeah, guys, uh, Father, uh, Father Matthew, I wanted to thank you once again for, oh, uh, for hosting today. I hope we can you can do it next uh, Wednesday as well if you don't have any other. Yes, absolutely. I'll be happy to. Uh, we can, we can, if also God willing, maybe over time, we can even choose, uh, pick up some other topics, maybe something yeah. maybe we can talk. Maybe it's a good idea to talk about uh, Darwinism or the orthodox perspective on evolution and, and in oh, general, Darwin's theory of, of, uh, of evolution and so forth and see what is the language of the fathers. I have one lecture that we, I think we did last year or two years ago, uh, just about that. Uh, you can take it, I think it's on our YouTube channel. We can, uh, it's, uh, it's some of the, the first ones that we started posting on YouTube. You can watch it if you want to, but we can have maybe even more deeper discussion about it with Father Matthew next time. However, Father, uh, God willing, we can maybe wrap it up. We're 7.30 now. Uh, okay. I would like to let you go. I wanted to thank you once again. and. God willing, maybe next Wednesday we can do it again. And, Absolutely. Uh, uh, just let us know if uh, if all good. We're going to count you in. I'm going to send an email okay. to tell that you're going to be next time, next Wednesday as well from 6 p.m. So, My pleasure. Thank you so much, Father. Okay. Uh, Father, can you say a closing prayer? And then maybe we can wrap it up. Okay. Shine, shine, O new Jerusalem, for the glory of the Lord hath arisen upon thee. Dance now and be glad, O Theotokos, O Zion, and do thou exult, O pure Theotokos, in the arising of him whom thou didst bear. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, O Lord, bless. Through the prayers of our holy fathers, O Lord Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy and save us. Amen. Amen. Christ is risen, everyone. Thank you for being really here tonight, risen. and God willing, we'll see you uh, see you soon. We'll continue with our Tuesday and Wednesday uh, Tuesday Catechism and Wednesday Bible studies as well as usual. Okay. okay.